What's up guys, this is Brad at Hourglass Fab, and today we're going to be talking about AC settings, AC frequency, AC balance, and together what these two can do for you to step up your TIG welding game. Let's get into it. So what is AC frequency? AC frequency is the current switching from electrode negative to electrode positive, a specific amount of times in a one second cycle. Now the higher your AC frequency is, the less time that it's going to stay on EN or EP. Therefore, it doesn't allow the arc to widen or fan out. So on higher AC frequency, you have a tighter arc, a tighter arc cone and more precision. Now when you lower the AC frequency, there's less movement in the wave. So what happens now is that your current is staying on electrode negative and electrode positive just a little bit longer. Therefore, it's allowing the arc to widen or fan out, causing less arc focus. Simply speaking, AC frequency controls the shape of your arc cone. Now, a Lower AC frequency is going to give you a softer or wider fanned out arc, and a higher AC frequency is going to give you a more focused precision arc. Now, what is AC balance? AC balance is the percentage of electrode negative versus the percentage of electrode positive. Electrode negative is penetration, and electrode positive is cleaning action. With electrode positive, your current is traveling from your work into your tungsten. And with electrode negative, your current is traveling from your tungsten into your work. Now when you're adjusting balance on your machine, you can look for two things. Your machine's either gonna read that balance in a percentage of electrode negative, or it's gonna read that balance in a percentage of electrode positive. Now Miller and HTP read in electrode negative and Everlast and Thermal Arc read an electrode positive. Now when we think of AC balance, let's think of a whole number like 100. Now if we divide EN and EP up into that number, it's gonna give us a ratio of what our machine is actually doing. Now the EN side of things, that's gonna be your penetration. The EP side of things is gonna be your cleaning action. Now I run a Miller Dynasty 210, and that's basically my workhorse, that's what I do all my work with and Miller reads an electrode negative on screen when adjusting AC balance. So typically I'm gonna be anywhere between 70% electrode negative all the way up to 80% electrode negative, which would give me 20 to 30% electrode positive. Now the more cleaning action, the more heat you're inputting into that tungsten because it's flowing from the work into the tungsten. Now if you crank that cleaning action up a whole bunch, a lot more than you need, that's unnecessary heat buildup, and all it's gonna do is deform the tip of the tungsten. It's gonna cause balling. Balling is gonna cause arc stability loss, as well as arc wonder. Now on old transformer machines that have like a 50-50 balance, which would be 50 EN, 50 EP, you can't control that your tungsten is gonna ball up. There's gonna be a lot of heat input into the tip of the tungsten. Go to the Synchrowave Transformer series, and they have AC balance adjustment, and you can kind of counter that balling effect, but a lot of people still ball tungsten on transformers. Now, inverter machines, you have AC frequency and AC balance, and a wide range of where you can move those two to work together. So there's really no reason to ball your tungsten on AC. Now let's take 16 gauge material, for example. Outside corner joint, Corner to corner fit up, we're going to want to raise our AC frequency, lower our AC balance. Now why? Well, raising our AC frequency is going to narrow the arc cone, therefore giving us more focus on the arc. Now if we were to lower our AC frequency, your arc cone is going to expand and it's not going to want to focus directly in the root of the joint, which sometimes makes things a little bit complicated. 
Now, why would we lower the AC balance? Well, EN is going to be your penetration. Lowering your EN is going to give you less penetration, and on sheet metal, you don't necessarily need a whole lot of penetration. Now, the thicker material that you're welding is gonna have less AC frequency and more AC balance. You don't really need to pinpoint the arc as much as you do on sheet metal with the AC frequency, so you can lessen that. You also want to raise your balance because raising your balance is going to increase penetration, and that's what you're shooting for on thicker material. Now, I could sit here and give you every single setting for every material thickness, but I'm not going to. If you do have questions, shoot me a DM on Instagram at Hourglass Ingenuity, or you can email me at hourglassfab at yahoo.com. Now, when you're prepping your material, your cleaning action isn't going to clean that material for you. You need to actually put in the work and clean the material. Cleaning action's job is not to clean the material, and it won't do that anyways. What cleaning action does is just break up the oxide layer that's on the surface. Now, when I'm prepping my aluminum to weld it, cleanliness is key. I can't stress that enough. Everything needs to be acetoned wiped down. No oil, no fingerprints. Now, if you're cutting aluminum with a bandsaw blade that had also cut steel, maybe you used a wax on the blade, maybe you used an oil on the blade, maybe you were just cutting a cold rolled material and a lot of that oil got on the blade. If you run that through your aluminum, now your aluminum edge is contaminated. You need to clean that. So what I do is I use a belt sander and a designated aluminum sanding belt, maybe 120 grit or so. And I'll run every single edge of that aluminum material across that belt sander and clean it up. And then I'll acetone wipe all the edges and then deburr all the edges with a deburring knife. Now, prep is 90% of the work on aluminum. Prep is 90% of the work on anything. Now, aluminum is extremely conductive. You know, steel is not quite as conductive as aluminum is. So when you're welding aluminum, it gets really hot really fast and that heat spreads out across the part. So the most important thing to focus on when welding aluminum is to establish the puddle, start adding filler rod, and move at a fast rate so you can stay ahead of the heat. Now real quick, we're gonna jump over to the whiteboard and I'm gonna draw some of this stuff out so maybe I can help you understand it just a little bit better visually. frequency 60 Hertz 120 Hertz top is electrode positive bottom is electrode negative the middle ground is zero now on 60 Hertz you're gonna move back and forth from electrode positive to electrode negative a lot less than you would on 120 Hertz now the more times that current changes direction in a one second interval is going to help assist in keeping the arc narrow and your arc cone tight and focused versus if it had more time on EN or more time on EP, then it would allow the arc to widen out. 60 hertz, 120 hertz, again. As you can see here, the arc cone coming off of the 60 hertz tungsten is a lot wider than the arc cone that's coming off of the 120 hertz tungsten. Electrode negative is pushing current into your part, and that's causing the penetration. Electrode positive is pushing current in from your work into your tungsten, and that's your cleaning action. It's breaking up the oxide layers as it comes through, and then the EN part of it's pushing back in, causing the penetration. Now, as a rule of thumb, on thinner material, you want your AC frequency to go up and your balance to go down. Less penetration, more precision. When you start getting into thicker materials, you're going to just decrease frequency and increase balance because you want more penetration and the precise arc isn't as big as a problem on thicker material as it is on thin. Now let's move on to how AC frequency and AC balance works together and what machine setting changes could affect the outcome. Red's electric.
electrode positive, blue is electrode negative, and green is AC frequency positive and negative. This is in a one second cycle time in brackets. This would be like seven hertz on AC frequency, but just so you get the point, I drew it out. Now this is electrode positive, 30%. This is electrode negative set on 70%. Electrode positive is gonna travel from zero up to 30%, and then it's going to go back to zero and down to 70% EN. Now the AC frequency is following it the entire way. So with your frequency set on 60 Hertz and your balance set on 70%, you have a wide fanned out arc and you don't have a whole lot of penetration. So the blue represents penetration and the red represents a fanned out arc. Now when you change your settings to 120 Hertz on the frequency and 75% on the balance, now you're only running 25% electrode positive, so there's less cleaning action and more penetration. 120 hertz, you have a tighter arc. The blue represents the 120 hertz arc, and the red represents the penetration that you'll get from cranking your balance up from 70 to 75. I know that was a lot of information, and I know a lot of you probably already know this information, but it's worth it to me to explain it for the people who don't. Now I know the majority of what I know about aluminum welding from a guy named Mark Winchester. You can find him on Instagram at Winchester Metalworks. Absolutely fantastic welder and fabricator and a great guy. Now the thinner the material, the higher the AC frequency, the lower the balance. Now AC frequency is gonna be different on say an outside corner joint versus a fillet weld. On 16 gauge, I might run 160, 170 hertz on an outside corner. And in a fillet formation, I might run 130 to 140 hertz. I'll also put a link above. You can go ahead and click on that, and that'll take you to a video called TIG Welding Cups and How to Use Them. And I go over aluminum welding and what cup to use and why. So that'll kind of go hand in hand with what I have on this video. Now if you want setting advice for what you should be running on your machine per material thickness, shoot me a DM, comment below, you can email me at hourglassfab at yahoo.com, find me on Instagram at hourglassingenuity, and I'll be more than happy to help you one-on-one -on -one to try and get your settings dialed in on your machine. If you do them differently, it's not wrong. I'm not sitting here telling you that you need to do it one way and that's the only way. Like I've said before, there's a thousand ways to do things. You just got to find the one that works for you. If you like this video, hit the like button. If you want to see more videos like this, go ahead and subscribe. I have a lot more content coming your way, and I appreciate your support. Thank you very much for watching, and you guys have a good day. We'll catch you next time.